Hi, I'm Greg. I'm Kenny. And I'm Abby. And welcome back to PSN. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Welcome to today's PSN special. Um, my name is Brian Fitzgibbons. I'm coach of the boys lacrosse team here at Pembroke High School. And I'm joined with uh, Aaron Fletcher, the vice president of the Pembroke Titans Booster Club. And uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about the boosters. Uh, so two years ago, uh, Pembroke Athletics and the boosters um, decided to unite all the individual booster clubs into one uh, big unit. And uh, the idea behind that uh, was to have one group help all the athletes here at Pembroke High School. So since the inception of the, the United Boosters, um, they've been able to make some major contributions uh, to athletics and the student athletes here at the school. Um, so Aaron, we'd like to talk a little bit today um, about the boosters. And, and first, I'd like to ask you know, how the boosters began. Um, we started in the fall of 2012 and we were formed to raise monies for all of the athletes in the Pembroke High School sports program and it's comprised the Pembroke High School Titans Boosters is the umbrella organization for all of the athletic teams so there are 26 teams that fall under it and each team has a team representative who is on the board and has voting privileges to help determine what monies are spent for. Great. And um, how, how, what are some of the ways that the boosters have contributed to the athletics here at Pembroke High School? Uh, this past year we were able to purchase a sound system for the outdoor fields. We were able to purchase safety nets for the outdoor fields, a portable scoreboard which can be used on the fields further out um, to keep score. We offered four or $500 scholarships to graduating seniors and then we also purchased a huddle program which is a video subs subscription program that's available to all 26 teams and with that um, coaches or parents can video the team's practices and or games and then the coaches can use those for practice or parents, extended family members, recruiters can use them as well. Great. That's awesome. And, and what are the, some of the upcoming fundraising plans that the boosters have? Um, we're going to do two, which we did last year. One is the Taste of Pembroke, which is usually in January or February and is a really big hit for us. Um, we're also going to do, uh, new this year, a letter writing thing that the athletes are all going to write letters to help raise money. And then we do the Marshfield Duxbury Triathlon in the summer. And a large part of our money comes from running the snack bars um, throughout the season, all three seasons, and all teams help out with that. Great. And uh, can anyone join the boosters? Um, when, when's your meeting? We meet the second Tuesday of every month, and it's open to everyone. Everyone is invited to join. We love to have new people. It's a really great organization, fun people. Um, so we invite everyone to, to come to the meetings and help out. Great. So again, the, the meetings are the second Tuesday of every month, and, and any uh, PHS parent can join. Right. Um, so we look forward to seeing all the great things that the boosters do this school year. Great. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. I'm Abby DeCoast, and this is Titans News. The MIAA has a new football playoff system this year. The Titans are in Division Three with 12 teams. Eight of the 12 make the East playoffs. The East winner will play D3 West winner the first week of December at Gillette Stadium. For full playoff information, check out the MIAA website. Fall MIAA tournament begins the first week of November for any Titan making it in. Upcoming events. Pembroke will be hosting the Patriot League Field Hockey All-Star Game October 27th. Then on November 9th, South Sectional Volleyball Tournament. Thinking of playing a winter sport? Tryouts start the Monday after Thanksgiving. Remember, you must have an updated physical they only are good for 13 months. Winter sports include boys and girls track, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls hockey, swimming, wrestling, gymnastics, and cheering. Hi, we're in the Coach's Corner. Uh, today in the Coach's Corner, we're with Mike Garrity, uh, AKA The Hammer. I was actually wondering, uh, how did you get that nickname? Well, just so you know, I have a rich history of being a disciplinarian, so the nickname Hammer just happened to stick. Ah, I see. Well, good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon to you as well. Uh, tell us a little about the middle school cross country team. So, just tell you about the middle school cross country team. We have over 75 student athletes currently performing in the 7th and 8th grade on our team. We just competed in our first meet last week over in Norwell, and our boys unanimously swept the meet, and our girls won 17 to 44. 
They had seven of the top eight runners. So we have a lot of potential. We have a lot of really gifted runners that haven't even entered the high school ranks yet. And we're poised to have a great season. And most importantly, all the kids really like it. That's so, great. That's loving great. it. Um, why do you think it has been so popular? I think number one, you know, the kids really like it, yeah. but I also think they're learning a lot. And when you become a runner, basically, you can become a runner for the rest of your life. We teach the kids how to stretch properly, how to run properly at pace. And then when it's time to go, you know, screaming like an eagle during a meet, they just go and they perform really well. But I think the biggest thing is if they learn and they have fun, they tell all their friends, they bring their friends up. We've had, I think, 40 more kids from last year. So it's a huge, uh, it's a huge increase. Uh, what do you know about the high school uh, track and cross country teams? So knowing what I know from Coach Z and Coach Rooney, uh, this is one of the finest programs in the entire state of Massachusetts. And again, the biggest thing is the atmosphere is just phenomenal. All the kids have a blast. It's just a lot of fun. So we're just trying to take what these guys have built here over the last seven, eight years and bring that down to the middle school ranks. And we're off to a good start so far. And uh, how important do you think a middle school athletic program is? It's huge. It's, it's your foundation. Uh, if you get, the sooner you get kids playing a sport uh, and you get them playing at a high level, just being competitive and having fun with it, uh, the better chance they'll succeed when they're in high school. They know what to do. They know the drill. They know what to do when it's race day. They know what to do. They also know how to become a good student athlete. They study. They make sure their grades are on top of it. That way, when we come to the high school, hopefully we can rip off multiple state championships. Sounds exciting. And uh, are you a runner? Uh, I'm a wannabe runner. Uh, I ran my first half marathon back in May. I'm running my second half marathon in three weeks on the 20th. So I just ran 10 and a half miles yesterday. Sore, but uh, it's awesome. I love it. There's, yeah. nothing, there's nothing quite like getting in the zone when you're running. It's really fun. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. That was the Coach's Corner. I'm Mike Garrity, and I'm Zach Schaefer. Hi, I'm Zach Schaefer, and here's our weekly sports update. The girls' soccer entered the week with a record of 3-6-2. The Lady Titans started out 0-5, but over the last two weeks, they've gone 3-1-2. The Titans still have a good chance to make the postseason. They hit the road this week with three away games, Monday at Hanover, Wednesday at Middleborough, and Friday at North Quincy at 4 a. In boys' soccer news, the team entered the midway point of their season at 4-2-1. The Titans had an amazing comeback last week, losing 4-0 with only 20 minutes left against Hanover. And they came back scoring four goals to come out with a 4-4 tie. This week, the boys have three home games, Monday versus Hanover, Wednesday versus Middleborough, and Friday at 4 o'clock against North Quincy. And in field hockey news, the field hockey team increased their record to 6-1-1. One, one. The Lady Titans had two huge wins last week over Situate and Hanover. The ladies are halfway through the season and have four games this week. Tuesday versus Hanover, Thursday versus Hingham, Friday against Norwell, and Saturday uh, they play Hingham at 9 a.m. Hey, this is Dana Batista, and I'm coming to you from PSN. We're out on the turf with Morgan Worley. The girls' field hockey team is having an outstanding year so far. And a lot of people who come out to the games don't really understand the rules. So Morgan's going to help us with uh, some of the things that you really wouldn't know. Morgan, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. You having a great season so far this year? Yep, we're at four, one, and one. That's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about the game and, and some of the things that people coming wouldn't really know? So can you use both sides of the stick? No, you can only use the flat side of the stick. So what happens if you turn the stick over and hit with the other side? Um, it's a turnover. It's, it's a turnover. turnover. How about, can you do a slap shot like hockey? Can you bring the stick all the way up? Um, only if no one's five yards like around you, you can bring the stick above your hip, but not if anyone's near you. Now, how about if the ball hits your feet? Can you kick it or anything, stop it with your feet, anything like that? No, as soon as it hits your foot, it's a turnover. Okay, so if you were passing the ball to Greg right now, Greg Wood, football player, and they're having a little pass back and forth, and... What if Greg stops the ball with the other his foot right there? What would happen there? I would get the ball. You would get the ball. Greg, turn the stick around. What happens if he goes and stops it with this side of the stick? I would get the ball. I know the ball. Now, can you do anything like a wrist shot in hockey? Like, is it a flick or is yeah, it? Yeah. That's do called it. a flick. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Is there any other kind of weird rules that we wouldn't know about that the fan would, would need to know? Um, if I had the ball and I was starting, Greg would have to be five yards away from me. He okay. Can't be near me. I'm starting. And do you have to pass it to somebody or can you take it and start to run? Um, as long as you're out of the 25, you can take it. 
but unless you're like if you're in 25, you have to go five yards. Excellent. Well, good. Well, this is PSN. I was with Morgan Worley. Having a great season out in field hockey, and uh, we hope to see all the fans out here. In cross-country news, the cross-country team is coming off a bye week to travel to Silver Lake on Tuesday for a 3.30 meet. Currently, the boys are undefeated, and the girls are 3-2. and two. Over the weekend, the boys traveled to New York and ran at Bowdoin Park against the top teams in the Northeast. The Titans finished second, losing to the top team in the country. The football team has a bye week this week, and the Titans dropped a tough game to Situate on homecoming 21-7. to seven. They travel to North Quincy on October 18th at 4.30 against the Red Raiders. They close out the regular season on October 25th at Hanover before the new MIAA playoffs begin. In volleyball news, the volleyball team inches closer to the tournament. The ladies are 4-5 and five at the midway point of their season and have three games this week. Monday, the ladies host one of the top teams in the Patriot League, North Quincy, at 4 o'clock. They hit the road Wednesday at Silver Lake and Friday at Women Hanson. Good afternoon and welcome to the AD Corner. Uh, my name is Dana Batista and today we're going to do a little bit something different. Um, we're going to talk to uh, Ken Blaza. A um, little bit about the pressure of, of recruiting and football and, and getting recruited um, and what it's like and what's that, that's been and, and what's the feeling been like for a high school student. Um, who is, is trying to get a scholarship. So, uh, Ken, obviously your sport is football. Yes. What position? Uh, I played tight end and outside linebacker. Okay. And what are your aspirations for next year? Uh, I want to play college football and definitely try to at least make the team and hopefully play in the future. And, and what level are you looking at? What, what type of football? Uh, right now I'm looking at Division I, Division I A, and Division II. Nice. And how long has this, this gone on, this century, sophomore year, junior year? What, what's the timeline for getting looked at for a scholarship? Uh, it really happens when you're a junior, and you, really that's the biggest year for as, as far as recruiting, and you really want to get out there and talk to coaches, and that's just when the whole process starts. Yeah. And did you go into camps over the summer? Did you do anything like that to get your name out there? Yeah, I did. I went to a, a good dozen camps this summer. It really does help when it when it comes to recruiting and like meeting new coaches and looking at schools and whatnot. And it's a really big process, but it's definitely worth it in the end. And what, uh, have you talked to anybody who's been on scholarship or anything like that? Anybody, you know, on a football scholarship and know kind of the pressure that goes along with it? Yeah, I, I surely have. I, I know a couple kids that got scholarships from here, John Hooper. He, I know he has definitely worked his way up to where he is now. And, he definitely deserves where he is, and you know he he knows how much of a process it is. Yeah. And what do you think the uh, the biggest eye-opening experience, like going to a camp, seeing other players? What's the the size, the speed? What's the definitely just the overall competition is just amazing. Just how everyone wants to be there, and you know their hearts in it all the time, and that's what really makes you want to play. Excellent. And how's the season going far so far this year? So far, we're up to a rough start. You know, only three, but. We'll, we'll definitely turn around coming up this week. I think we got a good chance against Middleboro, and then our league starts, uh, you know, this week, and I think we're turning around. Excellent. Well, good luck to you, and hopefully everything will work out for you into college. And well, thank you very and, uh, much. Move on. Excellent. Right, thanks. That was Mr. Batista, and thank you for watching this week's episode of PSN.